Honey, have you seen my scissors? I borrowed them to fix the guitar, here. Oh, well, I can't find the needle I was using, either. It was around here. I think it's in the box there. Uh, while you're looking around, I'll play Doc Constutter's ball. <laughs> Beekman's Barbecue Stand was a place between Waukesha and Milwaukee. I went to the owner and asked him if I would put in a way of amplifying the sound, which consisted of my mother's radio, my mother's speaker, telephone, a cinder block, and a broom. And with the cinder block held the broom, and the end of the broom, I taped the telephone on, and I sang into the mouthpiece, played my harmonica, you could hear that, but you couldn't hear my guitar. And of course, that's the famous place. That's where someone in the back wrote a little note, gave it to the car hop, and the car hop gave it to Les and said, we can't, we can't hear you, Les, you know, can't hear you. And so that's when the whole story of Les getting frustrated and going home and starting his first work on the electric guitar. How'd you come up with the idea to take your father's phonograph needle and put it beneath the guitar strings? It was simple. If it plays a phonograph record, it must play the guitar, right? They both vibrate. It didn't last long because of the feedback and all that, but, but uh, it, it proved the point. So I said, well, there's only one way to do this, and that's to take a piece of railroad track and that's so dense and free of any vibrations that I don't want that I would get this sustain and this clear sound, honest to God sound. So I put the string on it, took the part that you listen to on the telephone, put it under the strings, and lo and behold, I played through my mother's radio and I got the most beautiful sound that you could ever imagine. So I run to my mother and I says, oh, I found it, I found it. And my mother says, the day you see a cowboy on a horse playing a railroad track, right? <laughs> so that went right out the window and, and my dreams were shattered. Hey Les, you can't take it with you. That's one thing for sure. So let me have that guitar, those pedals and that app. I said you can't take it with you That's one thing for sure Well, you just remember Ain't nothing that a Les Paul guitar can't cure Come on, Les I started out with a log yeah, It's just a 4x4 four four. In 1941, I was here in New York playing with Fred Waring on my Sundays, I would go over to the Epiphone factory on 14th Street. The night watchman would turn the machinery on for me so that I could build this guitar. And I made these wings. I made it and clamped it on there. So I had the most dense piece of material to prove a point. Now, oh, you realize that when you put your finger on the first string that this, the length of the, th the string is constantly changing. And so the placing of the pickup has to be in a position so that it is optimum or a compromise to the player so that no matter where he's playing on the guitar, he gets the sound that he wants. Well, I put that on a hollow-bodied guitar. And when I did that, I found that I was getting unwanted, uh, an un unwanted condition developed immediately because the pickup it has a string over the top. The string is doing this. It is vibrating. 
And not only does that string go in, in one direction, but it, it will start to change and it, it, it is unpredictable, like a lady I know, okay? And so what happens with conditions like this is that a second unwanted condition exists, and that is, is that the top of the guitar is vibrating like this with the pickup in it. So you got a string doing this and a, pick, and a pickup going up and down on the top of the guitar and saying, hey, only one thing should move, just the string and not the pickup. So that was where the idea came of taking this whole thing and changing it into something that was fixed. And may I show you what I came up with that sort of will go down in the history, I guess, as a, the, a, a first in its little uh, uh, world. And this is the take first had one pickup on it. And what we did, instead of taking a railroad tie, which people would laugh at, I thought I would do it with a 4x4 four four because no one would notice it. Well, I started with a 4x4, four four and I thought everybody would fall over, so I put sides on it. And I have another side here, I and mean, this is what the sides look like. And these sides just plug on to here, and you screw them on, then you go on your job and you play. They, when it's screwed on there, it, uh, it resembles a guitar. It's telling you it's a guitar. But one thing, that the pickup is not moving. The top of the guitar is not moving. And so we call this the log. And because of the log, uh, the solid body came about. I went to the Gibson people, and it took me about seven, eight years to finally convince them that this is the way to go. And uh, about 1951, the president came to me, and he says, you know, I got orders from the chairman of the board to sign you up. He says, uh, find the guy with the broomstick with the pickup on it and sign him up. And I said, okay. And we signed. He says, with one stipulation and that is is we won't well, we won't use the name gibson and what do you suggest and i said why don't you call the les paul guitar this is a beauty the holy grail this is the single most recognizable les paul i'm willing to bet on earth Dynamic range makes the guitar a very powerful experience. So when you when you pick up a Les Paul, you kind of feel power in, in your playing. Keith Richards was the first one to bring one back to England, but Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and all these guys discovered that these late 50s Les Pauls plugged through these high-powered amplifiers gave them a whole new range of sounds. They could play at extremely high volumes. They had sustain that would just last forever. The Les Paul, like many of Gibson's greatest instrument designs, was so far ahead of their time that uh, they had to wait for the music to catch up with it. Guitar has very high output. And that will actually cause the amplifier to distort, uh, which in rock and roll circles is very good. He smashed a lot cheaper guitars than these. This is one that would be $275,000. To have Paul McCartney and the Jeff Becks and the Eric Clapton and the Peter Townsend playing this Les Paul guitar, they were out there looking in their world the same as I was looking in my world. The sustain and the ache and the roar and the ferocity and the subtleness of just that volume pedal, I mean, it's, it, it's limitless. Yeah. 